say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to the Farmer's Kitchen. We're the farmers. This is our kitchen. Our outdoor kitchen. Outdoor kitchen. We're actually not cooking here tonight, but you know what? The other day we were out and about and somebody came up and they say this all the time. What, what's the most common thing people say that they want to see on the show after we're cooking? The animals. They want to know how our animals are all doing. Our animals, we take them for granted because mm -hmm. we see them every day. We have two wonderful Pyrenees. We do. They are so sweet. They're the sweetest animals I have ever seen. They are. We have a ram that we kept because... He's awesome, he's huge. And he's sweet, he'll yes. come up and he, he, does, he hasn't knocked anybody no, down. he's a really nice ram. We have sheep everywhere. Mm -hmm. They're getting older, but we'll take a visit with them. We're also gonna see the donkey, Kelly's miniature donkey. Hallie. And Mabel, who's getting old. Yeah, they're still sweet. Now, if you look at us, you can see that uh, the leaves are starting to fall. We have jackets on, we can almost see our breath. That's right. What's that make you in the mood for? Christmas. It's not time to put Christmas it's, stuff it's up It's getting yet. close. I got excited. Can we try that one more okay, time? Okay, try it again. All right, it's getting cool out, mm -hmm. right? So what does that make you crave? Soup. Food-wise. Right. Soup. I like soup. soup. Not right. Christmas. Christmas is just around the Christmas time. Coming. Christmas is right around the corner. Right. I promise I'll blow the horn soon and okay. we'll have Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. But we got to looking, digging through the freezer, mm -hmm. freezer diving looking through the fridge and we found some ingredients to make some mighty tasty soup. But oh, first, yeah. let's do our visit with the animals, then off to the kitchen because it is chilly. It's yes. gonna be dark. And I'm starving. And we need soup. That's right. Boo's showing off. Look, at, look over here. Now she is a true wild cat. She came in here skinny and she takes care of the chipmunks and the mice for us. She's now showing off as to what she does. All right, now this is what's going on. This is Spot Nose. He's a beautiful specimen. He is, and he's nice. And he's nice. He likes to be scratched behind the ears. He's never butted anybody. <laughs> Knock on fence. He very shortly will go in with the girls. Now, people may be saying, where's Montana? That's right. Well, here's what happened to Montana. Our vet, who's a wonderful guy, mm -hmm. Steven's his name, he has an assistant there named Sherry. Yes, good and friend. Sherry has a menagerie. Mm -hmm. So that's where Montana is that's because right. we couldn't eat him. That's right. And we already have a big breeding ram. So here we have Mavis, Mona, Martha, and Myrtle. Yes. And they've already eaten today. Now these again are Katahdin sheep. And you can see Martha there is shedding. She looks pretty rough. But all that comes out. We don't want to have to deal with wool right. sheep and I like that. mess with all that. These are meat sheep per se, but our old girls have probably got one more year of breeding. And then he would rather be pet. I know he would. Come here, Maggie will take a bone. Now Maggie will eat it. So we've seen these animals, so we got two more to go. We do the biggest of the crowds. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> all right, let's go see the Here's big animals. So we're out here with Holly. That's Kelly's baby. She likes the special treats. She likes the special treats. Now, Maybelle may be in the woods taking a nap. I don't see her right now. If not, I'm not going chasing after her because I'm hungry. Are you hungry? I'm starving. Guess who decided to show up at the last minute? She saw the apples. Come on, girl. All right, girl, here you go. There you go. Ooh, 
You want to feed her? No, I She got, likes to take them out of your play. mouth. She like put it in your mouth. Yeah, go her. ahead. Uh -huh. Here, girl. Oh, yum. The grandkids love her. You'll really want to wash your hands before, yes, we, I will. before we start cooking. <laughs> Thank you for showing up. All right, let's go inside and eat. The oven is preheating. Why is the oven preheating? Because I want to make some bread. Now, what happens when you're out and about and you don't have time to let your bread rise and then knead it and then turn right. it back? What if, what if we wanted to have some bread that would go along with soup that's kind of biscuity, yes. kind of like oh, easy to cut and easy to put a slab of butter on? What would you do, Mrs. Farmer? And no yeast, something quick that's going to rise. I make you think we can pull that off? I think we can do that. Because we need that with soup. Yes, we do. That being said, we're going to get our soup going. Now, we dug around in the refrigerator, in the freezer, we thawed some chicken out. These are chicken thighs. You could very well use chicken breasts. Mm -hmm. Use whatever you want to use. Now, always, always, always save your chicken broth. And when you're making a soup or chicken and dumplings, and this is about, I'd say probably about eight cups to start with. Anytime that you're making any kind of chicken soup or chicken dumplings, if you don't have boiled down chicken parts, it's not gonna be as good. Right. So let's get this started. And what I'm gonna do to begin with is we're gonna take about four thighs. Those are bone-in, aren't they? Those are bone-in. There's a lot of fat on these, but it's good fat. Mm -hmm. And think about when you get a little sore throat or oh, yeah. you're starting to feel just a little bit puny, this will cure you That's right. many times. So we got digging around, I said, what kind of noodles do you want? And you said, make, make an orzo soup. Love orzo. A chicken orzo, mushroom, lemon, Leek. joy with the leeks. Now, normally we would use onions, mm -hmm. but the leeks have such a mild, it's hard to explain. We're gonna use leeks and fennel. I'm still on my fennel here. That's right. We're gonna get this boiling, then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna start with some, as my grandfather would have called it, olive oil. That's right. And what we're gonna do, if you'll cut me some celery and some carrots. Well, and you want this on low? Yes, please. Now look here, what do you have here? Oh, what is that on those leeks? Is that dirt? Yep. It's fresh out of the ground. Fresh out of the ground. So we got these not too long ago at the store. And they're fresh, they're organic. And yep, they got dirt on them. That's why we're cutting them over here on this plastic deal. Let me go ahead and cut your celery. Yes, please. Now we're gonna use maybe two sticks of celery. Okay. And I'm gonna peel out this outer, just the outer edges. Leeks, to me, are one of the most underused. I used to use them a lot. So, I got my little dirty cutting board over here. I'm gonna cut it up to where I about need it. So now, I'm gonna rinse these guys off. Basically, you want to cut them lengthwise down the middle, then cut them up. Instead of onions, it's leeks. Now, I used to use a whole lot of leeks in my wild game cooking on Kentucky Field. Leeks are delicious. Aren't they, though? Yeah, they really are. It's one of those things that you forget about. But, Nikki, if you want to go ahead and pop all that stuff in, Might let's have... get that going. All right. Into our olive oil. Yummy. Now, there are going to be a lot of flavors in this soup. So now something else I'm gonna do is cut my fennel. Now fennel is gonna add a little bit of sweet. I like a little bit of sweet in too. my chicken soup. It's kind of a salty, brothy, beautiful thing. So I'm gonna come in. This is a tiny little fennel bulb, but I'm gonna use two of them. We're getting rid of a bunch of stuff here. We need, to, it's right on the edge. Going bad anyway. I love the flavor that it gives. I love the texture that it has. There's going to be a lot of flavors here in this soup. There's going to be a lot of vegetable material in this soup. It's not just going to be chicken and broth. And there's going to be some subtle flavors that kind of really go well with each other. And you may say, why so many flavors? Try it first. And I think you'll see why. It's smelling pretty good in here. Now look at that beautiful, beautiful mixture and some beautiful shiitake mushrooms. And it smells amazing. So look what we have. Okay. We got a beautiful start. Now during this process, we're gonna use some dry basil, dillweed, thyme, 
solid cherry pepper. That's some of the things you're gonna need for this recipe to make it really good. All right, so look at what we've got here. And the smell in this kitchen is kind of tremendous. Oh yeah. So at the end of this, we'll touch on this again, and this is completely up to you. But a lot of times at the end, somebody will put some dry parsley in their soup, right. or even some fresh parsley. You know what I've been doing since I met Raul? What have you been 26, doing? 26,000 years ago. Every time he would put in his soup something that looked like parsley, it was basil. Oh wow, yeah. What does basil do to a chicken soup base? It gives you that sweetness that goes so well with the fennel oh, yeah. and the leeks, and it gives it a it gives it a beautiful sweet taste. Parsley, it's just kind of sitting there looking yeah, at you. Sometimes pretty. tasting like cardboard. Okay. <laughs> That's just my choice. So here's where we stand. This chicken's getting close. We're gonna let this go till it's almost ready to go. Now all that fat is gonna add so much taste to this in the end. It's getting that time of year. We normally wouldn't eat bread, bread. but there's a tough winter coming and mm -hmm. we, I feel like I need to put you on need. 20, 25 pounds. Right. To protect you from winter. To protect me from the elements. That's right. So we should probably do some bread. Now, we were thinking, okay, it's getting late. Mm -hmm. It's already getting dark. We're behind. I would like bread. We don't have four hours to let it ride. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to make some really, really quick bread, that's got kind of like a biscuit to go along this, what would you do, Mrs. Farmer? How about a quick bread with mayonnaise? I like quick. Okay. How many ingredients? There's only four ingredients. Flour, salt, mayonnaise, and I put buttermilk in it. How long does it take? 35 minutes and we got bread. 35 minutes That's and right. we got bread. I like that. All right, I'll keep watching this chicken. And if you want to go ahead and get a start on it, I'll let's clean ready. up a few things and we'll get ready. Okay, what are you gonna do, Miss Farmer? All right, this is just four ingredient bread. You could do so many different things. I've heard people say they use yogurt, I've heard whatever. Or regular milk or whipping cream. I have decided to do mayo and buttermilk with mine. Gotcha. I started with one and a half cups of flour. Self rising. Self flour. rising, thank you. If we don't say it, it's all purpose, but we're saying it today. Bread, so we want self rising. Yes. And I need some salt. I will help you. All right, and about where's gonna half teaspoon maybe? And I have got three tablespoons of mayonnaise here. All right. And some people, like I said, use yogurt. Mayonnaise is buttery to me. You know, I like all kinds of bread. Who doesn't like bread? Right. But this comes out biscuity. Yes, it does. And I really like it along with soup, so. Okay. It's a quick throw together. Three quarters a cup of buttermilk. That's it. That's kind of easy. Yes, it is. And see how it's almost like a biscuit. Just like that, boom. Now I have a small loaf pan. All right. And what I'm gonna do, instead of greasing this, I've got me some parchment paper. I'm gonna put this in the pan, that way we can lift our bread out. And that's what's hard to get in the first That sounds like somebody eating popcorn at the movie theater. Did you ever All sit right. in the movie theater? And, and listen to that. the person doesn't just grab popcorn to eat, but when they grab it, they go. That's right, they wanna let you know they're eating popcorn. Thank whoever, you. I wanna know whoever thought that would be a good idea to have popcorn in theater. I do, I love popcorn in theater. Whoever's idea it was, um, when I see him in heaven, I might have you a can tell him him. that you're upset. All right, I'm gonna kind of shape this as I throw the dough in here so it doesn't come down around it. And see, it's almost like biscuit. Oh yeah. We had some of that the other night and put some uh, sesame seeds on top. And it's just a beautiful little loaf. It goes so good with bread. It's, cr mm, it's crumbly and tasty and yummy. You could put olives, you could put cheese in it if you wanted, but we're just gonna go the basic. And I'm gonna give this, you like to make stuff smooth, so I'm gonna give it to you when I'm all done. There's a condition, and I can't think of the name of it. Kelly and I have it, Nikki doesn't. It's when people eat loudly, really crazy. loudly. It makes us crazy. What's it called, Kelly? Misophonia. Yes, you do. Look it up. Nothing bugs me. I tell you what, though, when it's a quiet theater and you hear. They're enjoying the movie. They're enjoying the movie. Misophonia. It's a real thing. Kelly knows it. She's got it worse than I do. All right, here's Look how this looks. So I just had to, I kind of had to move it around in here, but this is going to make it so when it grows, we can just pull it out. Do you want to put some sesame seeds on this or do you want to yeah, wait till it's toasted? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we're gonna do sesame seeds on it, toasted. Toasted sesame seeds. And we're gonna have a loaf of bread. We're gonna have a loaf of bread in 35 minutes. Just to go with our soup, I love it. It's real it not crunchy, so the, the misophonic people don't have to worry about all the crunching. Okay, I'm gonna stick this in. It's ready to Let's go. Time it. It's ready to go. All right, so I, I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna leave this on simmer. And I'm gonna hand you some beautiful pieces of chicken. 
we're going to take the hide off of them, the bones out, and cut that up into little soup bite pieces. Oh, yummy. You know where this movie's going, don't you? I do. Okay, I don't see a whole lot of anything that we're going to have to skim out of there. It's pretty, Looks pretty young. clean looking mm -hmm. stuff going on there. So if we'll dump this into here, I, I just love looking at that. Look at that. You too. Isn't Look pretty? at that beautiful, beautiful. Yum. Now you see, we're not going to have just a bunch of chicken and a bunch of pasta floating around. We're going to have beautiful, wonderful tastes that really go well together. It's kind of a complex thing going on here. It's something we have to do right off the bat. Now this is you and me. We like pepper. Yes, we do. Lots Open of pepper. your sinuses up in the wintertime. This is our telecherry pepper. So right now, already, now that now that that's moving around together, you smell it. Mm-hmm. I do. That broth boiled down mm -hmm. over the time that that was cooking. So I'm going to add two more cups of water. You might need more, you might need less, depending on you. And I tell you what, if you want to, let's go ahead and take at least, let's use most of the juice out of that, because that, the acid of the lemon, along with the sweet vegetables, oh yeah, is just so magic. Your mother, here's a little clip of your mother making a lemon chicken soup. That's the Greek. Following a Greek recipe yes. that was beautiful. This is a little more in depth than that. A little more ingredients, but that was a simple thing in beauty. Oh yeah. So we want this whole lemon, right? Uh, let's use most of it. I think so. I like that. I like the lemon flavor. So you know, everything I do harkens back to those who came before, people that I watched and trusted and observed. And Raul, pictured here, this beautiful man who had a restaurant in Casablanca. I didn't know. For years, I knew him and talked to him, and he was so humble that not until later on in his life did, did he let me know that he had a huge restaurant in Casablanca, cooked for movie stars, King of Morocco. I'll never be another one like him, never be another one like him. So something else that he did, which I have done, he said it was cheating, but it's a good kind of cheating. Oh, I think so. Take you some bouillon and put in there. Take you some chicken bouillon. There's all kinds of different stuff out there on the market. Just some basic, Chicken boy, and that gets that stocky thing going. Add some salt. All right, we're gonna make a little bouquet garni here. We're gonna take some fresh basil, some thyme. I'm gonna I'm gonna put those bay leaves right in the middle. That may keep it together. Just a little butcher twine. So we got thyme, basil, and some bay leaf in there. Now, you may say a lot of people may say that's too many flavors. Here we go. Yummy. We're gonna also do some dry basil. It's a beautiful thing, as much as you want. And I'm gonna put probably a teaspoon at least in there. Now, one thing that when I watched Raul cook, I was just kind of knocked out. Didn't matter who was around, what was going on, he would taste and he'd use the same spoon and go back in. This this is boiling. It's gonna kill anything. We eat it sometimes, sometimes, one time back in the 80s. We kissed each other right on the lips. No way. You shouldn't Remember tell that? people. Don't tell people that. So <laughs> anyhow, we're eating after each other and we don't really care. This is a rated G show. Should I have said that? Yes, you should. Okay. So don't be afraid to taste as you go along. How is it? You can tell we're getting there. Here's the thing. I'm gonna put some more, I'm gonna put the rest of that bouillon in here. I want that stocky flavor. I'm gonna put a little bit of salt. You couldn't put stuff in, but you sure can't take it out. So taste as you go along. Do you want me to start working on your chicken? Yes, please. Once we get the chicken cut up in here, it needs to cook for about 25 minutes. Everything's done. The vegetables are sauteed. It's gonna soften them up just a little bit more. All right, this is a joint effort here. I'm just gonna take this meat and I'm gonna dump it in here. We like our chicken soup with lots of things in it. Here's a little bit of magic. Mm -hmm. He would always take a French liqueur. It's got a little sweet in it. That's probably a tablespoon and a half. Our thing now is orzo. That's a cup I put there. That's a cup. So that's gonna take about eight minutes and that's about right where we are. We're just gonna mix that up. Let that little pasta, this is nice. It's like, you know, it's like if you don't have rice and you got orzo, 
Those are so good. You got something special. Yes. Let it get some of that moisture in there. Swell it up just a little bit. Our bread is rising and cracking and popping. And in a minute, we're gonna make you a salad dressing. We're gonna clean up here just a little bit. So here's our overview. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take about three tablespoons of olive oil, two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, any kind of stone ground mustard if you want some Dijon, and then about two tablespoons of honey. That is gonna make us a pretty good little salad dressing. This is quick, I'm putting it together. I'm just gonna put just a little bit of garlic in there. Got it. Tiny bit of salt, and just a little bit of basil. Okay, so we have our salad dressing. We have pistachios, we have cranberries, you got cheese, you got pears, you got Yum. pickled beets. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the bread out of the parchment paper and we're gonna have some good food. Now with our salad dressing, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and put how about your tosser? How's that? I'm gonna put a little cranberries, a little pistachios, some pear. Let's do some pickled beets. All right, you ready? I'm ready. That just has a little bit of feta. Yeah, we need top that. we need feta in there. Okay, so now Grandma Solomon's ladle. Ladle. Isn't that nice? Look how thick that is. Now I did that on purpose just to show you how much. Oh yeah. <sighs> Yes, those are dirty dishes behind us. That you're gonna do tonight. Yes. I'm gonna go sit in the living room, read a book, and eat, and you clean. Uh-huh. Uh. That's coming. <laughs> so, Mrs. Farmer, there's one thing I wanna say. You usually say, you're starving. I'm you're starving. You're starving too? I'm starving. What are we Literally waiting for? Starving. What are we waiting for? You go first. I already know this is so good. It's got a deep, brothy, rich taste. Mm. That is so and good. All those combinations. You don't have the onion taste as much oh, this time. Man. You've got the leeks which are sweeter and more mild. I like the orzo better than rice or any kind of noodle. Those are, oof, oof. Then you've got that kind of, I tell you what, let it be your secret weapon. Don't tell anybody. Just use it a little bit of anise liqueur mm -hmm. or fennel liqueur, and then That's let it amazing. be your secret weapon. A lot of times you go to a really good restaurant and you get some mussels that have that liqueur. Oh yeah. And butter. Can I try some salad? Try the salad. I love feta too. I gotta get a big bite of that too. Mm. I could just eat that salad by itself. That's delicious. Wow. Good combo. Pears are good in that. Mm. Oh. Mmm. Mm. Do I try the bread? Do you want me to share the butter a little bit? Oh, it's melting. It is. We can just get a little now bit. Now look at that bread. Look at the top of it. We'll put a little sesame seeds on. But look at the consistency of this. That's beautiful. For a half hour, you throw it together with just a couple ingredients. Are you kidding me? Oh my goodness. Mmm. Wow. Wow. Oh. All right. <laughs> I was getting ready to dig in. I'm not going to do that. That's right. Because in a minute we're going to turn these lights out, turn the cameras off, and have a meal like a normal human being. That being said, <laughs> you know what? What? I'm scared. Why? I'm scared because our half hour is up. Oh, don't be scared. We're it's running okay. out of time. So, that being said, if somebody ran up to you and was desperate and they said, Mrs. Farmer, where can we find your recipes? Where would you send them? I'd say timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. You got a piece of biscuit in your hair too. Do I? Thank you. Let me get that. I don't know how you got biscuit in your hair. But we also have a Facebook page and we talk to a lot of folks on there. Mm -hmm. We don't argue. That's we right. don't talk politics or religion. We talk cooking. That's right. If you want to be nice and visit old Southern style, come on and visit with us. That being said, it's it's really difficult to get on our page. How do you do that? You hit like. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. So as I look at this, and I can't stand to look at it any longer, remember the leeks, remember the fennel, oh, yeah. remember the little bit of liqueur, remember the orzo. That's amazing. Just And this salad dressing is so easy, but so delicious, so fresh and clean in your mouth. It's all about good times. Good friends. And really good eat. We'll see you next week with a brand new show. Oh, wow. Now it's time to eat. Mm.
We have been catering for a lot of years and I wanted everything to have a specific taste. Therefore, I had to come up with my own products. Right. A dry rub, chow chow, and our barbecue sauce or something that we use in all our catering gigs. I developed this barbecue sauce that is not the th really thick syrupy stuff that you get. This is, has more of a natural, it's got some pepper and onion flavor and you can actually see the particulates in there. You know, a lot of people are asking what we use our dry rub on. Now, obviously, pork and chicken are two of the more common things. Also, we've been using on our corn on the cob with butter. That is I'm telling you, this That's stuff wonderful. with potatoes is fantastic. So 40 years in the making, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Dry Rub. Mm -hmm.